Here's up guys, Rex Skull here, and welcome to my full Huntress Guide. This is something I've been wanting to make for a while, but I haven't really thought of the correct way to do this until now. So yeah, I think I'm ready to do this whole thing. So first off, I'm going to introduce myself to those people who are new to the channel. Hi, I'm Rock Skull. I play Huntress both on console and PC. I've recently left console for PC though, because I just got my PC fixed recently. Otherwise, I got rank 1 Huntress on console. And recently I've gotten rank 1 Huntress on PC. So I think I know my stuff pretty well when it comes to Huntress. So we're going to go straight into this and we're going to go straight into the good Huntress perks. I think a lot of what Huntress uh, perks are good for her are only the detection perks and the slowdown perks. There's also Huntress specific perks that I'll go on about later. So the first thing is detection perks. Um, these are things like barbecue and chili. Bitter Murmur, Discordance, Nurse's Calling, and Whispers. Survivors, since Huntress has a huge humming radius, uh, they can very easily hide from you. So having detection perks to find survivors is always a good thing. Um, and also having things like Bitter Murmur and Barbecue can help you just get free hits on survivors that are really far away. Get nice snipes on them. So the next types of perks are slowdown perks. Huntress on her own, obviously she doesn't really move that quick and she doesn't have any movement uh, abilities so having things to slow down the game so having something like corrupt intervention uh, ruin undying of course and pop um, just having those types of perks to slow down the generator just a little bit always helps corrupt intervention is good because in the beginning of the game you don't get like three gens done in the distance while you're just chasing one survivor so next we'll go into the hunter specific perks and those are Shadowborn and Iron Maiden. So what Shadowborn does is increase your field of view. I would say this is more for people who are like really into FPS games. It's kind of what you're used to. And just having a wider field of view helps. And Iron Maiden helps you reload faster. And kind of goes with barbecue and chili in a way. Because sometimes what survivors will do is they'll hide in a locker. So they don't get detected by barbecue. But if you're running Iron Maiden... As soon as they come out of the locker, they'll get review revealed anyways, because they'll scream. So the next thing we're going to go over is Huntress's add-ons. So what I've done is I created a Huntress add-on tier list, just to make things easier for you guys and for myself. But this is basically what I think, my personal opinion, of uh, what add-ons are best and what add-ons are useless. <laughs> we're going to go from S tier to F tier, just go over everything. First off, we'll start off with S tier. A freaking iridescent head, dude. Most Probably one of the most overpowered add-ons in the game. Um, you run this with infantry belt, and then you're just then you're just trolling. It's just an easy win. You can be like a horrible huntress and still win with this combo. So, yeah, very broken add-on. So that's why it's S tier. Oh, uh, we'll go to A tier add-ons. So, the exhaustion add-ons is something... It's very broken, basically, the exhaustion add-ons. Because what it does is it'll cancel out perks like Dead Hard and Balance Landing and Life. If you play the game in the higher tiers, you'll probably see these perks a lot. So having an add-on that basically just completely cancels them out is insanely broken. And the reason why this green one is probably their second best add-on is because... It's 90 seconds long. It's insane. It basically, like, it lasts the whole game, basically, for the survivor, and it's very annoying. And the next is the babushka, or whatever, however you pronounce that. Um, the, any wind-up add-ons are very useful because when you throw over a pallet, um, there's a chance that the survivor will be able to duck away if uh, the wind-up takes too long. So having this, like, green babushka being able to throw over... Like super quick is very very helpful the uh, monograph span is basically the same way too um but they both help with hitting people up close as well um hitting people before they get around cover uh, it's just very very useful all around and if you use this yourself you'll see how useful it is and the next thing is the infantry belt also a tier this is an insane add-on because having more hatchets means more hits you can get which means more down survivors and more pressure. So just having two extra hatchets is really, really good. And once again, if you use this add-on yourself, you'll tell 
how much of a difference it makes. So the next tier is the B tier. I've already gone over the windup add-ons and the exhaustion add-ons, so I won't go over those. And the belt add-on. So I'll go over the, the, what do you call those, the halves next, which basically decrease your time between hatchet throws. Which is also really insane, because this increases your snowballing potential. Makes it very, very good uh, of hitting multiple survivors. And next is the C tier. Uh, once again, I won't go over add-ons I've already basically gone over. But the the mangled, uh, the begrimmed head, I think it's what it's called. Um, it's, it's okay. Usually you down them before this add-on even matters. Um, but if you are snowballing and you are just like randomly hitting survivors, then this add-on becomes really, really good because they have a longer time to heal. And also as a bonus, it makes repairing uh, a little bit slower. And next add-on is the, the gloves. So this makes you uh, reload faster, which is also very good because you can... This makes it so you can reload in a chase sometimes and still have good distance on the survivor because Huntress is basically useless without her hatchets, so... Being able to reload quicker is always good. Uh, the next thing is the shiny pin. I think a little bit of an underrated add-on because I think there's times where this add-on can be very, very good because when you're in like a moment where you're like holding your hatchet up to a survivor who's like trying to duck and cover and stuff, you can catch up with them pretty good with this add-on. Um, and you can maybe catch them off guard sometimes. So I think in those cases it becomes pretty useful. And then the next thing, purple, uh, whatever you call it, the thing that makes you see survivors after you hit them with your hatchet. So this add-on, it's it's okay. It's just the information from it is not really needed because most of the time you already know where the survivor is. The only cases I could see this being good is like if you're on a cold wind farm, for example, and you hit a survivor through it. Uh, with a hatchet then you'll be able to see them through the corn and then you can just get another easy hit on them um and sometimes in a chase it can be useful but once again it's kind of eh. next tier we'll go to the d tier stuff um the next one is the green add-on it's a little bit different because it doesn't have the repair thing so i would say it's kind of useless it's not that good i suggest only using the purple one and the next is the hindered status effect add-on so i use this a lot when i was on console when i first started out um and sometimes it was actually pretty useful uh to catching up to survivors but i realized after a short time that this doesn't make that much of a difference like i'm pretty sure the, the speed difference it makes is not that big i wouldn't suggest using these just use the exhaustion add-ons if you're planning on giving a survivor a status effect that's basically going on to the next tier the blindness and the hemorrhage status effect add-ons are useless. You, you won't ever need those. <laughs> Unless maybe with the hemorrhage add-ons, you're running something like uh, like Bloodhound to see the blood better or something. But even then, you'll usually find survivors anyways normally running like whispers and stuff. And the last thing in the F tier is the pungent file. Probably, I'd say probably her worst add-on. Um... The thing about this is like it lets you it shows you all the lockers with all the hatchets, which is very, very annoying. And this you just see a bunch of yellow hatchets all over your screen. If you run this add-on, you'll see just how annoying it is, and it just gets in the way. Like when you run out of hatchets, it'll show you lockers that are close by anyways. So it's basically useless. So yeah, that goes over all the add-ons. Alright, so the next thing I'm going to be going over is the basic Huntress playstyle. I'll be going over not just the basic Huntress playstyle though. I'll be going over some other playstyles that Huntress is also very good at. So first off, we're going to start off with uh, snowballing. So what snowballing is, is uh, this means that she's really good at hitting like multiple survivors. Uh, not just downing them, but just hitting someone and then hitting another survivor. So this does also mean she is good at slugging. So that is actually downing multiple survivors and causing pressure without actually hooking them. I wouldn't suggest slugging all the time though because it's not very good for ranking up because that's just how the system works. Um, so if you want to win, I would suggest try and hook more often. But if like you just want a 4K, then yeah, slugging is the way to go. So, like, I mentioned this before with the mangled status effect add-on. 
Um, if you do this with like the exhaustion add-on too, like they're basically exhausted for like a lot of the game. So hitting them with this is really freaking good. Um, and your pressure normally just comes from anyway, just you downing somebody and putting them on a hook like really quick because that gets people off gens. It's kind of like the normal killer thing, trying to down people quick. Huntress is probably has one of the best uh, downing potentials in the game, and we'll get into that in the next category. So this next category is about the average chases. So like what I was talking about before, Huntress has like really, really good downing potential, probably one of the best in the game because of her hatchet melee combo. Um, if you don't know what this is, this is throwing a hatchet and then meleeing right afterwards. The reason why this is good is because right after you throw a hatchet, the cooldown of you being able to melee afterwards is really quick. So um, after you throw the hatchet, you melee. Um, you'll, you'll be able to catch up with them too pretty good, even after they get the speed boost from when you hit them. Otherwise, the other times, um, I would say usually it's you throwing a hatchet and then throwing another hatchet afterwards because, because I would say a lot of the time when you throw a hatchet at a survivor you won't be able to catch up to them they'll make it out of pallet or something so sometimes just having another hatchet to be able to throw is good and a basic thing to know about chases is survivors when they uh drop pallets vault windows or vault pallets they get stuck in animations so try and predict when a survivor is doing these actions and you'll get free hits with your hatchets all right so now we're going to get into the most probably the most complex part of this video and that's uh dealing with survivor jukes so the most common survivor juke you'll see is them just doing a zigzag pattern there's a very easy way to deal with this and that's just leaving the center of your screen in one place or if you're on pc and you have a crosshair just leave your crosshair in one place and just wait for them to run into it and then it's just uh, like a free hit almost every time. So, because luckily with Dead by Daylight, survivors, uh, they can't do erratic movements really. Just the way the character animations work. And don't try and follow their movements because since the Huntress's hatchets are projectiles, uh, you'll miss every time if you try and follow them. So like I said, just leave your the center of your screen in one spot and then just throw it uh, when they or when they're about to run into it. So the next most common thing is the close-up juke. That is where like a survivor will just like run around you and make it very difficult to hit it like really up close. If you do hit this uh, hatchet, however, you'll most likely be able to do the melee right after and get a free down. So I suggest practicing flicking if you're on PC. Uh, you can do it on console too. I, I think I was pretty decent at flicking when I uh, was on console. Otherwise, on console, I would say you can leave the center of your screen in one spot where you think they're going to be. Kind of just like the zigzag pattern thing I was talking about before. So it's all just prediction and hoping that they'll just run in front of you. And then you'll most likely just get a free hit if you leave the center of your screen in one spot. And the next type of juke is a vault juke. This is where a survivor will pretend that they're about to vault, but then just completely juke the other way from the window and usually will make you miss if you try and throw your hatchet preemptively. So the way you counter this is simply you be patient and you wait until you see the animation actually go off and then you throw your hatchet for the free hit. And if they don't do the animation, they juke the other way, uh, you're going to be keep holding your hatchet up and then you'll be able to get the hit on them. So doing that is is a good, it's a free hit either way if you do it correctly. And the last type of thing and the most probably most common thing with like really good survivors is the pallet prediction type thing this is where a survivor will either keep running on the pallet or they'll stop and throw the pallet down uh, on your face so you got to predict uh, when throwing over the pallet because you want to throw over the pallet to get a free hit so what a lot of bad hunters will do is they'll always try and put their hatchet up and the survivor, the good survivors, they'll just keep running and they'll gain distance on you. So what you got to do is try and predict what the survivor will do. This is sadly, there's no like special way on knowing what the survivor will do. You have to just completely guess on like the survivor's play style. Like if they're a bad survivor, they'll probably just drop the pallet every time and you'll always get a free hit. But if they're a good one, just try and... I would say try and go for melees more often on loops 
um, because either way you'll get a pallet out of the way even if you miss so I think going for melees more often in those situations is uh, better alright so now we're gonna get into platform specific tips uh, we'll start out with crosshairs on PC. This is something I got like as soon as I got my uh, Dead by Daylight on my PC. I wanted to try out crosshairs because I never tried it on console before. And ever since I put it on, I've, I've really liked it. And it's worked out a lot uh, more for me just knowing where the center of my screen is. Um, you can go without it. It's honestly your opinion. But personally for me, it's been very helpful. And then for some console specific tips, but besides Nurse, Huntress is probably the most difficult killer on console so I suggest for console players you look to use something like control freaks um, these are things that extend your sticks on your controllers uh, this basically makes it so you can make little movements a lot better and it honestly makes your aim a lot better for longer range otherwise you can go like mega sweaty and you can put like tape in the center of your screen uh, just to know where it is since there's no crosshair in game you can put you can put a tape in the center of your screen you can maybe try that um, I never did that but I've seen other uh, people like on reddit and stuff say that it worked out for them so that's something else you can try so uh, I think that's basically it for this whole hunter's guide um, if there's anything I left out or you have any opinions on anything just let me know in the comments below Thank you guys for the support as always, and I'll talk to y'all later. You got me losing my focus, don't know what you do, you